Hey guys, welcome back to this Reason Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today we're gonna talk about multicolored knotting. So this is gonna use the same knotting technique that I've shown you here before, but we're going to be mixing colors, materials, and even sizes of materials to create a really unique texture. So let's get started. Do you wanna learn how to make your own custom color warp double diamond twill woven wall hanging? Join us inside of the tutorial club on Patreon at patreon.com slash spruce and linen. Link in the description box below. Here in front of me, I have a ton of different colors and materials and sizes of materials and we're going to mix these together to create some unique texture. So let's talk a little bit about what is in front of me. We have you know, we have some plied yarn, we have single ply yarn, so that's more like a roving yarn, and this one is kind of thin. I have cotton frizz ribbon, silk sari ribbon, um, some wool yarn that's really thin, and some wool yarn that's really thick. We have a little bit of cotton rope. I decided to stay with quite thin material since we're adding multiple strands. I don't want it to get too, too bulky. Um, I have some of this sort of boucle style yarn and there's just there's so many things this is some hand spun yarn cotton yarn you could you could create texture with this infinitely there is no limit to what you could do with this but we're gonna try to do this in a bit of an organized way. So I thought we would do th at least three different tries. We're gonna do one that's colorful. So we're gonna do a true multicolor. One that is sort of in my mind, like maybe we stay in the green family and try that. And then another one that is mainly neutrals. So I'm gonna just jump right in and kind of start playing around with what looks good together to me. So I'm gonna push these out of the way a little bit and I think we're gonna start with the like multicolored one. I'm gonna grab some scissors. Now, my thoughts for the multicolor is sort of to do like a pink, a blue, and a yellow, and sort of that kind of palette. Now, you could go super, super bulky with this if you like. I'm gonna try to stay not too crazy bulky. I don't want these knots to be like, you know, super huge, but let's see where we go with it. So for the first one, like I said, I think I wanna do you know, some yellow, some pink, some blue, but again, I wanna mix the materials. So maybe I'll do the blue silk sari ribbon, maybe a pink cotton frizz ribbon, this yellow yarn, and see, even that, I'm like, we can definitely go thicker than that. So, Maybe I wanna add some more stuff. You know, this actually isn't overly pink. It's almost like, it's almost brown. So maybe I'm gonna swap this. Maybe I'll do this pink sari ribbon and then go for the blue cotton frizz. We'll do this yellow yarn. And then I also have, you know, I have this really chunky pink. So we could do something like that, you know, and that's gonna start getting pretty bulky. So this is a maybe to me. And I also have this like darker pink and this is really thin. So I definitely think I can add that in for sure. The yellow is quite thin. So I could do either multiple strands, maybe add some cotton rope in there. Okay, and then I have two blues, or I have two of each color essentially, like two strands of each color. So maybe I'll also add in that. Now, so now what I'm gonna do, and I might as well just try this, I'm gonna take all these strands and just like make one of the knots and see what it looks like. So this is a way I can test it before even weaving it in. So, I'm literally just gonna do an overhand knot, but I wanna leave quite a tail. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. I'm not sure about it. I don't know if maybe, 
I think I want to replace, I think like one frizzy ribbon is enough. So instead of doing the pink sari silk, I think I'm going to try this pink roving yarn. So let's try that now. And like maybe, maybe too many colors is just not a good thing. Okay. I definitely think I like that better. I've never done, I don't think I've done this knotting technique with the cotton frizz ribbon. So like it gives it quite, it's quite a look. Like, do I like it is the question. But I mean, we're just, we're just trying things here. So why don't we try one more test? And that's going to be with like what if I replace this cotton frizz with the sari silk in the blue? Maybe that'll be a better combination. So you can see this video is definitely like, this is a experimental tutorial because I, I know you guys like seeing sort of the process and this, this is it. Like a lot of it is just trial and error and sometimes you have to eliminate things in order to figure out what actually looks good. Okay, so there's that. I do think I like that a little better. I definitely think the cotton frizz ribbon works. Maybe I'll try it with the neutrals because what I was finding is that it was just standing out so much more than all the other textures. Now what I'm thinking is I may wanna add another strand of some sort of pink because the pink now like I mean this is a very light pink but maybe what I'll do is add two strands of this pink just to kind of fill it out so that there's like an even amount of the colors so let's give that a try um, I'm going to do this in a way that doesn't knot up all my yarns now we have to remember that putting knots into the yarn is going to make it a lot shorter very quickly. So I think I'm going to take, let's have a look here. I think at least two arm lengths. Yeah, maybe I'll do two and a half. So let's do two and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get two and a half lengths of each yarn and I'm gonna do two strands of this dark pink. Okay, so now that I have all my strands, we're literally just gonna go ahead and take this and tie multiple knots into it. So again, just an overhand knot, and you can decide what you want for the spacing of these. Obviously, the closer together the knots are, the more texture you're going to have. So I'm gonna do them fairly close together. There's about two or so inches between my knots. And you could even do the knots um, more randomly spaced. Like all of this is going to provide a different, a bit of a different look. But so far as I'm knotting this, I like it. And I like that like different yarns show up on the top of the knot each time. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and keep knotting. One more tip as well is to not pull your knots super, super tight if you wanna have more texture. Okay, so I've got a ton of knots in this now. And just to put it in perspective, I took two and a half of my arm lengths. I'm short, but I took two and a half of my arm lengths and I've ended up with basically like one arm length. So it does shrink up quite a bit as you do those knots. I'm gonna grab my loom and we're gonna weave this in. Okay, so I'm ready to weave this in. And typically with knots like this, I actually kind of like just weaving it in by hand versus with my tapestry needle. Sometimes I'll use it, but what I find is that you do have a lot of drag happening when you weave with knots. Now you could use something like a shed stick if you wanna make that a little bit simpler. I'm just gonna weave this right in. This is a four ends per inch loom, and I have it warped for the four ends per inch. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave over two under two warp strings. And this is just because it is so bulky and I do want the knots, like all the texture to come through. I think this will be a little bit better than just, you can see here how it's catching. So a shed stick will kind of eliminate that problem a lot more for you, but I'm gonna grab my comb. And then what you can do is really like pull the knots so that they are in the spaces going over the warp strings versus like this, because then your knot's gonna get stuck in the back and we really wanna showcase those knots in the front. So then I'm gonna turn around and go the opposite, under two, over two. And you can even hold these up by hand as well. Just pull that through. So I'm gonna just keep going with a few more rows so that we can really see the texture and color come through. Okay, so here's the texture we ended up with and I love it. I think it's so beautiful and I think it's just, again, with something I talk about a lot is trying to get that beauty of randomness. And sometimes it can be hard to achieve without it looking very strategic. And this is one of those techniques that like this doesn't look strategic. It looks nice and random, but in an even way, if you will, because we did use the same strands throughout the whole piece. Now to finish this row off, I'll show you what I like to do. So I'm gonna give myself a bit of a tail here. I'm gonna cut it off right here. And then I'm going to undo these knots because we don't want to have all this bulk in the back of the weaving. And this is just gonna allow us to um, tuck that away. Now I did end on the under. So something we can do is just go over the very last string just so that we have something to kind of wrap around and have a nice edge. Since I'm sort of making a sampler piece right now, I'm gonna weave a couple rows of the same yarn that I started with just as like a spacer because I like to sort of do these samplers and space them out so you can really see each section. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next color combination. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next color palette. So this one, like I was saying before, I would like to try something that's all in the same color family but not the exact same color. So I have all these different greens and I think we are gonna try the cotton frizz ribbon. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna probably go with all of these, but I'm gonna see how thick it's gonna end up. These are very similar colors, I'm now realizing. Um, then we have this darker green and sort of like a mid tone green or I could go ahead and use the the plied yarn as well Ooh, that could be really nice I'm kind of liking the tone of this yarn so if you look at this um, in my mind I mean this one does have quite a bit of I'm just liking that this particular green is a little bit more, this is just totally an aside, but these are things I think about as I'm doing this. This green is a solid color green and is almost reading like a dark Kelly green. This is more of a mossy green, so there's a little bit more brown and yellow mixed in there. And I'm kind of liking that tone a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna go that route. And now, this does feel quite a bit, let's just do a test knot. This does feel thinner than the last grouping I did. And I really like the texture of the last one. So could I, could I add another thing? Do I wanna add another thing? Um, you know, I could even add like a brown color to lean a little bit more into those mossy tones, but I mean, that would look nice in, for me. <laughs> I know not everyone loves um, this kind of color combination, but let's see here. And see, I'm trying to decide if the brown feels out of place or not. Um, I was gonna go a little bit brownie tones with the, the neutrals color palette, but that's not to say we can't do this here. 
I do kind of like that it brings another element in. So I think we're gonna give that a try. So I'm going to be using, basically just eliminating this one. So I'm gonna use this one strand of this, one strand of this dark green, a strand, basically a strand of each. And we have recycled cotton frizz ribbon, more of a roving yarn. This isn't wool, but it is like a roving style yarn. It's single ply. We have applied yarn. And then these two are also plied, but they're very thin. So one is more of like a worsted weight and this one might even be thinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and get strands of that, knot it up, and then we'll weave it in. All right, you guys, so here is the second multicolor test that I've done. So we have those greens and that little bit of brown. I think it provides such a nice earthy tone and the cotton frizz ribbon really does add to the texture. As you can see, this is a little bit more flush and the knots are a little bit more contained. As soon as we add in that cotton frizz ribbon, because again, you know, it's got, it's, its name is perfect. You know, it has all these little frizzes that stick out, you know, that's really adding to the texture and makes it feel, I would say like a little bit more organic and a little bit more messy in a good way. I think that's what I think when I think of organic, it's like, it's not perfect, but in a good way. So let's go ahead and try one with more neutral colors. Since I did sort of a little bit of brown here, I kind of want to see if I can find some grays and do a really nice light whites and grays version. So I have this hand spun yarn. Um, I believe it's Angora. I don't know. I uh, hand spun this in college many moons ago and got an annoying knot in there, which I guess doesn't matter because we're gonna just knot it more. But I love this sort of, this. it's like a really natural soft gray mixed with white and I also have this this very creamy white I have a darker gray I kind of want it to stay quite light colored though so I might go ahead and add some thicker white there or maybe even some cotton rope Ooh, that is a nice mixture. I feel like it's gonna be really nice and just soft. I'm kind of wondering if the this gray might be a little harsh. So the other option would be to like, potentially just do two strands of the other gray if I want it to seem, to stay really soft. Cause I do think, and let's do another test knot. You know, that is really nice. It does provide us with like a little bit of depth to it. So I think I'm just gonna go with it. And you guys, I'm gonna try something. Will it work or will it end in disaster? Let's find out. I'm gonna just try to pull these all at the same time, very carefully and gently. We'll see what happens. Um, this one's already getting tangled up in here. Just gonna untangle that. <laughs> if I had like a few bowls or something to contain these all, that would be really helpful. I don't, I'm just kind of winging this. Where is this even getting caught? Okay. Okay, oh, I think it worked. That was so much faster. <laughs> So if you can, um, get all your lengths at the same time, cause that just saved me a lot of time and effort. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and knot this all up and then weave that in and we'll take a look at it together. Okay. 
Here is the last color combination I used and I absolutely love it. It feels very soft. I love the mixture of the off-white and the grays. It feels just really cozy and neutral and I love it. I think all of these would work in different scenarios and I could totally see an entire weaving just made out of one of these combinations. Don't forget if you use this technique and you share it on Instagram, tag me at Spruce and Linen, and you can also use hashtag SL Weaving Club so I can see and share your work. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.